Here's a bag of 1.8 MHz ceramic resonators. In this video, I'll put them in an oscillator and see what tuning range I get out of them. Later on, I'll talk about some possible uses. The resonators are the three-legged type, with the centre pin connected to ground. The test oscillator has one transistor. A variable capacitor is used to pull its frequency. Later on, you'll see what frequency range I get from it. This is the circuit, a very common transistor culprits oscillator. None of the values are especially critical, though if the capacitors between base and emitter and emitter and ground are too low in value, then the oscillator will not start. I'll first try the oscillator with 220 picofarad between the base and the emitter and another 220 picofarad between the emitter and the ground. Both sections of the variable capacitor have their plates connected in parallel. That gives a maximum of around 300 picofarads. With the plates fully meshed, I can get 1746 kilohertz. As I vary the capacitor, the frequency goes up. Now it's about halfway. Now the capacitor plates are fully open and it goes up to 1783. This is what the oscillator sounds like with the receiver in the other room. As you can hear, there's a bit of frequency pulling, so it's definitely a good idea to use a buffer following this stage if you're using it in a transmitter or receiver. Unless, of course, you wanted to send frequency shift keying. As you can see, I'm getting a range from 1745 up to 1782. That's outside the 160 meter amateur band. But there are some possible other applications. If you wanted to experiment with a low power AM broadcast transmitter, for example, if you're restoring a valve radio and wanted to play some old fashioned music, then you could possibly pull the receiver up to a bit above 1.6 MHz and have this circuit as a local oscillator transmitting a signal. You'd need a few other stages to buffer the oscillator and to provide low power AM modulation. Another possibility is you could double its frequency to get you onto 80 meters. For instance, for a CW transmitter. In this case, double 1745 is 3490, so just below the band limit. And up here, 1782 is 3564. So you are covering quite a large portion of the CW end of 80 meters. What you're hearing in the background is a receiver tuned to 80 meters. Potentially, you could also quadruple it for 7 megahertz. There, you'd cover both the CW and part of the SSB section of the band. Bear in mind that quadrupling frequency also quadruples drift. And if you don't build your oscillator in a shielded case with voltage regulation, then the drift is likely to be unacceptable. Can you get any lower in frequency? The answer is you can. Here I've put some 1 nanofarad capacitors in parallel with both of the 220 picofarad capacitors. That is between base and emitter and emitter and ground. With the variable capacitor fully meshed, I'm getting 1730 kilohertz. Reducing the capacitance on the variable capacitor, it goes up to a maximum of 1772 kilohertz. What about if you wanted to get the 160 meter amateur band? I found that with Crystal VXOs, if you use very small capacitance values, you can get them to oscillate above their marked frequency. In the case of this ceramic resonator, I tried lower capacitance values, like 150 picofarad or 100 picofarad, but down there I found the oscillator was unreliable in starting. As a result, I wasn't able to pull the resonator upwards into the 160 meter band above 1.8 megahertz. But I haven't spent a lot of time on it, 
and it may be possible to arrive at an oscillator circuit configuration that is both reliable in starting and has low enough capacitance to allow the resonator to operate above 1.8 MHz. This has been our quick look at a 1.8 MHz ceramic resonator oscillator. Despite its low frequency, I was able to get quite a good pulling range of more than 50 kHz. It may be useful for certain applications around 1.7 MHz or to double for an 80 meter receiver or transmitter. 1.8 MHz ceramic resonators sometimes pop up on eBay or are available from specialist RF suppliers. Different resonators are likely to have different specifications and you might get different results.